I'm just giving you an example that I think one thing that um, you know excites teachers is when they see other teachers doing new things and I think it's all a matter of you know seeing what works for you mm. and uh, I think that confidence comes only by doing and I think all of you actually I hope you know through all this course and what you d you're doing through this uh, unit you'll actually have some bit of that confidence and I hope that's true not only where you are but also where I am because everything that you have said also applies to our context here and I think to everybody's context. As, as anne Marie says we've been writing about models and theories and, and that gave us a little bit of a problem to, to start with didn't it? It did do yes we had quite an interesting discussion about how we both understood the idea of a model and the the more we talked about it, the more we began to think that although there are definitions, people tend to understand curriculum models in a number of different ways. Yeah, and we didn't necessarily have the same view in that. And I came to e-assessment and online testing many years ago, back in the 1990s, and I suppose I would be a sort of a, an online testing entrepreneur in that I tried out lots of versions, failed miserably, have learned lots of lessons along the way, which is one of the reasons I'm involved in writing this module. I want to share the horror stories as well as the successes that we've had in, uh, in online assessment. And so David, what skills and attributes do you think have helped you succeed as a GP? Well, it's a really difficult question, that. Um, attributes, um, for, I think it's probably more about caring about people. I think that's the main, if that's an attribute. Uh, caring about people, um, liking people, being curious about people. Um, this sort of main attribute set, that's what sort of kept me going. And skill set, um, something around uh, being able to listen, to communicate with people, and having some technical skills as well have been an advantage, because I worked most of my time in a rural practice, so I had to do certain technical things there, stitch people up and things like that. But in the main, it's the, the attributes are really, I think, around just having um, some compassion and, and curiosity for people. I think that's been the main thing that's sustained me. And that recognise you can't see regulation as an activity in isolation of societal, political and national uh, issues. Uh, so it's quite a challenge, I think, in a, in a, in a unit on models. Yes, it is. I was, I was interested to talk to you really about how I think we, we, we spoke the other day about how standards can be arrived at in a couple of ways, either by having a, a set of standards that applies to the world or a, a process that uh, that applies to the regulators in, in each particular country. What, what are your views on the relative merits of those approaches? They, they both are important, of course, that it's the responsibility within every country to make sure that doctors are educated to the necessary standard so that to care for, for the people yeah, of that country. Yeah. And we have tried to design a, an interesting and challenging and fun unit for you on... It is about designing assessment according to your own resources. You need not copy what everything is written in, the, in literature. What you need to do is to adapt and to use your resources and to create the best program, the best assessment program that you can. Mm -hmm.